I ain't that chick. It's about self-empowerment. It's about self-awareness. It's about self-respect. So now tell me about your relationship with your mom. What it was like growing up and as you got into your teen years and your adult years. My mother was an avid health nut. I was raised vegetarian. We did wow. not eat meat in the household. We ate it with relatives or if we were out with friends. But in my home, we did not eat meat. So throughout our lives, my mother was always into health, the newest craze, you know, she was very active, she did belly dancing and swing dancing. Like, like that. she lived, my mother okay. lived. Like, like, like some that. people, you know, you just kind of like, oh, you just, opportunities come, you take, my, my mother lived. Okay. She, now, was your, were you raised Christian or Catholic? Or? When I turned about 11, my mother, my mother was raised Catholic her entire life. She went okay. to Catholic school, she went to Columbia, so my mother was a nice. heavily Catholic. Um, I, I don't, think her experience with the Catholic Church were very fond. Okay. And when we, when I was about 11, I would say she became a Buddhist. So now take me up to the point where your mom, where you guys had to become her caretaker or mom's health kind of declined a bit. Well, when I was 28, was when my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer. Okay. I actually took her to get her colonoscopy. She was 54. Now usually people go around 50. And she had kind of postponed it. She was like, I'm fine, I'm sure. So I'm like, her, her friends like, you have to get this done. But now, were there any signs leading up to her? Oh, you no. guys, oh, you just no. went in for a regular regular colonoscopy. Okay. But remember, mm -hmm. she's a holistic woman. Mm -hmm. She does not believe in surgery. She barely believes in antibiotics. So this right. was something where she was not going to do it. And at that point, it was just polyps. Okay. They told her that it probably will evolve into cancer. It happened quick. I do notice on Mother's Day, I tell my brother, mommy's a bit too skinny now. But that, now, did you do you think your mom knew that her health was rapidly she declining knew. and she didn't let she you guys knew, know? She knew and she just didn't want, she wanted to protect us, I believe. Okay. She definitely knew. I said, on. mom, you're too skinny. I was like, your next appointment, I'm going to come with you. So I go to her next appointment at Mount Sinai and they just want surgery, surgery, surgery. Now I'm at the point where I'm reading the MRIs and I'm like, this thing seems like it's spread to me. But what's your emotional makeup during this time? Emotional... <sighs> That was when it really hit me. When she said she would do the surgery, it hit you me it like, severe. You knew it was wait, serious. mommy can't handle this. At that point, I'm like, let's go to Sloan Kettering. I know they're the best, so we make an appointment. We go there, and the doctor tells us straight up. He's like, it's too late for surgery. Which is why I'm glad that my, inst my intuition oh my told gosh. me. I was like, I'm not a doctor, but I you knew, knew that what they were telling me, just that quick to cut. I was, I'm my mother's child, so when you're just telling me, cut, cut it out, cut it out, I'm like, mm mm, -mm. But he was like, no, he's like, we're past surgery. He was but like, now the other doctor was telling you that she could still have surgery. Yes, right? this, so was the, this was three days before. What, what do you think? I mean, what what is... So now I'm just like... Oh my God. And this is why my mother did not like you know, Western medicine at all. Did you guys talk about... No, nope, you know, we didn't even talk about it in the cab ride home. She was like, baby, it's going to be okay. You know, I had taken to like sleeping with her at night. Oh, wow. Um, oh, so gosh. now, like rapidly, it's taken her like three minutes just to sit up. So she's not the same woman anymore. So now, do you start making plans like the, like the things, like the last things I need to do with mom? Or? I was, at that point, I was, I was, I was hoping for the best, but I was preparing for the worst without saying it. So okay. now we were like, well, if we can get your energy levels up, we can try and do something. So now we were going to get, we went to get a blood transfusion. We were like, that was the first step. She can at least have energy. We can at least try and figure out what we right. have to do. So she went to get a, I went with her to get a blood transfusion. Um, the next day, you know, she's fine. The following day, it's like a Friday. So I come home from work and I'm like, mom, you know, um, I said, let's try and go to the park. I was like, I'm having a little weight, just trying to get her energy mm -hmm. up and everything. Right. You have a blood transfusion, you should have more energy. She's like, babe, I tried to walk to your apartment to make an egg sandwich and there was a crick in my leg. Like, I just can't, I don't think I can do it. I'm like, when you come home, come over. Mm -hmm. He comes over and I will, and so she's like, she's like, baby, can you get me a fish sandwich? I says, mm -hmm. fish store on 145th <laughs> Street in Harlem. She's a vegetarian now. She, was it a fried fish sandwich? It was a fried fish okay. sandwich mm. with french fries and ketchup and okay. hot sauce. Now, yes. would that have to let you know? <laughs> so that, I'm like, okay, we come back. The leg is really sore, almost too tight. Too slow. So I'm like, we're going to the hospital. She's like, no, no, let me just sit here. Then she starts sweating profusely as if you're running a marathon and you're sweating. She's sitting there and I'm watching sweat come and she's just sitting still. We're in an air conditioned room. So we go to the hospital, um, we wait a little while and they see her and the doctor comes over, he sees it. 
and he brings like a sonogram machine and immediately he says nurse get something 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 stat and so I was you like know. shit so they take, take her into some like x-ray room and the doctor oh, then a black woman doctor comes to me and she's like this could be a flesh eating bacteria a staph infection now I have a younger sister where my father whose mother died of this the previous year so I read, and, and I'm, so, I'm so in tune with my mother, I knew this was it. You knew. How does that feel when you know this is it? When you're sitting there and you know this is it, what does that feel like? I don't know. <laughs> it was, it was actually, sometimes knowing is better than the unknown. Okay. I, I knew this was it. And so now it wasn't a matter of if my mother's going to die, it's how she's going to die. And it was going to be on her terms. So they come back, they tell us it is a staph infection. It's working its way up the leg. They draw a line to see how fast it moves. They said that they can do surgery. Mm -hmm. The surgery would be to, to carve out all of the bad flesh or whatever. So would she even have a leg? Would she have a thigh anymore? Listen. So I'm like, so you would amputate it? And they're like, oh no, we would just keep it. Just a hollow leg. wound? 